Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I like the mocktail more, but like on, but it feels because it feels like I'm drinking a health juice, you right. know, you right. know. So it just like I feel good drinking. Yeah. It. Hello and welcome to Spooky Sips, where we put our love of horror movies into a podcast and sip some spirits along the way. I'm one of your hosts, Yvette. I'm here with my co-hosts, Laura and Brianna. Hello. Hey. All right. So we just finished watching the 2001 the others this spooky ghost story is about a woman who lives in her darkened home with her two children that are photosensitive and she becomes convinced that the house is haunted dun, dun, dun. and that's basically what the movie is about Warning, if you have not seen it and you would like to, oh. go see it. Stop this podcast. Go and see it. Don't let us spoil it because it's got one of the best, like, turn of events mm -hmm. that I've seen in a horror movie. Mm -hmm. So if you don't want that ruined, stop this episode. Go watch it yes. and come back. Definitely. This will be a spoiler, but also the movie is 22 years old. So Yeah, so I think we'll be okay. Where you been? <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, for some of our younger fans, they maybe just, you know. We're too know. young. They yeah. just missed mm -hmm. it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. This movie is so good. Oh, so good. Just, yeah, I'll just get right to it. It's so good. It's, it's just classic. It you know, like if you're classic. just in the mood for a spooky movie, like I just want to, I want ghosts. I want a big spooky mansion. Mm -hmm. I want Nicole Kidman because she absolutely crushed this. I always it's want just, Nicole Kidman. Creepy yes. children. Yes. Creepy children. It's it, it's Watch just it. it's everything you could want mm -hmm. when you want to feel spooky. Mm -hmm. Turn off all the lights and we just oh. watch this movie yes. and it's going to hit every light. time. Yes. yes. Just Turn have on a, a candle. Singular candle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I feel so like. Good. I am always the one to talk about the intro. So the intro to this movie is great. Mm -hmm. Yes. It starts out kind of like a bedtime story, a sweet bedtime story. Nicole Kidman says, now children, are you sitting comfortably? Then let's begin. Oh. And she goes into this, this bedtime story. And it, while this is happening, I think it's either just complete dark or dark with like just like the opening like a little bit of credits or yeah. something. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Oh, oh, it's so good. Now I swear we recently oh. watched this movie together. I think like, that we did. I think I we, yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like we did last right before you moved. I think so. Yeah, because as I started it, I was like, wait, I think I just watched this movie. Yes, thank I you. I had the, the same feeling. I was right? thinking the same thing. I was like. Wait, I know that I watched this movie a lot, but I feel like I just watched it. Yeah. Yep. And you know what? It was still great. It I know. It's yeah. still good. It's still good. Yeah. So it takes place in 1945, and we know that right away. So we know it's during the war. Mm -hmm. um, and this mother is alone in the home with her two children mm -hmm. that have a light sensitivity. So they can't be exposed to light much more than a flame. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, her husband is off at war, and she hasn't heard from him Mm -hmm. in a very long time mm -hmm. um and that's kind of the scene that's set and yeah, she also yeah. um do we know that she put out an ad for housekeepers yeah i think no. we pretty early on well pretty early on they show up they show okay up. right yeah okay yeah and and so um, okay, so I kind of mentioned like I love how the the opening starts with like her telling mm -hmm. this bedtime story. But then what we have is like Nicole Kidman just screams. It's this complete horrifying mm -hmm. scream. Mm -hmm. She wakes up from a dream. That's right. Um, but then after like that amazing, like just horrific scream, then we just have these people show up at the door and she's like, Oh, wait, that was faster than I was expecting. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of implied she put an out or she put an ad out for servants and they got there faster than she would have expected them to be able to come. Yeah. And yeah. it's Mr. It's Mr. Tuttle. Mm -hmm. um, it is uh, Mrs. Mills, Bertha Mills. And then it is Lydia. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So there's two older people and then a, a younger mute woman. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And her, the introduction to the children 
mm-hmm. is so good because again, this movie it just it just feels creepy the whole yes. time. Oh, you yes. know, it feels like a a nice creepy ghost story because she is Nicole Kidman is showing them around the house. I don't even remember her character's name because it's just Nicole Kidman. Um, showing them around the house, <laughs> mommy. <laughs> <laughs> Explaining that yeah, every time you go into a room, you have to lock the door as you enter and you can't have more than two one door open at a time you, you know as you yes. go into a room you close the door before you go to the next one closing the curtains and then it's like okay now i'm going to introduce you to the children oh and so creepy it's just dark like this dark hallway everything is all the curtains are closed no light except for a little candle and she doesn't warn them it's just okay i'll go get the children now and i swear there's a long pause yes. as she mm-hmm. enters the room to get the children while they're waiting for her to come out with them. And I love it because I think children are so creepy. Yes. I feel like this sets up where you're like, oh, something, something's about to happen. Something's <laughs> up with these kids. I just know it. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. And she, like, she explains that there's um, 50. Do- well, first of all, she mentions it's a three bedroom house. But then she says Does that there's she really? 50 doors. <laughs> And 15 yeah. keys. It's way more than three bedrooms, that house. Right. I don't think I caught that, but that's hilarious that, that yeah. we would believe that this palace is right. giant. <laughs> it's like three and bedrooms. She's like, it's three bedrooms, right? Am I? Yeah, no, yeah. you're right. Okay. Okay. And the fact that the gardener has to sleep in the shed. I know. Like, she's like, you can go get the tools and you can stay in the shed. I like, know. I'm sorry. Did you see the exterior of this house? This has at least 20 bedrooms. Yeah. Although I must say, I feel like in a lot of the movies we've watched recently, we've kind of talked about how like just shitty it is. Like all the things that go on toward women. Yeah. Just the abuse that happens with them and like everything. And she's just like, she's just like taking control. She's like, you're a man. You can go sleep in the shed. <laughs> right. The shed. <laughs> <laughs> the shed. With the gardening tools. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's so good. (laughs) Like, yeah, she's showing them around and she's going to introduce them to the children. And like, you see the servants give each other this look like, Mm -hmm. like the skeptical, like, what is this? Yeah. Which watching it after, you know, you Mm -hmm. pick up on so many things. Oh, Mm -hmm. no. Mm -hmm. Yeah, watching it for a second time, it is, it, it makes so much sense where it's like, oh, you know, I feel like they gave you a lot of hints. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> in the <Okay>. movie <laughs> so we, we usually we usually ask this but um we've all seen it before mm-hmm. so do you remember the first time you watched it did you know the twist no 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 because yeah. a lot here's the thing i'm just so smart you guys you're just so smart you always figure I'm it out so you crack the code. <laughs> but usually i figure it out it, it kind of drives my husband crazy because like i'll normally be like oh well that's what's gonna happen and then like i like figure it out mm-hmm. but this one i did not see it coming yeah no yeah i think I they like... threw enough red herrings yeah in there yeah to you know make you question what was going right. on yeah I think there was enough to make you think because, you know, at first, it, you know, again, it's like, oh, classic. There's a ghost, maybe. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, no, OK, what about these three people that just showed up right They're They're sus for they sure. So nefarious. Something's going on with them. So like there's so many levels of what else could be going on yep. that mm-hmm. I yeah, I, I'm curious if anyone caught it from the beginning. So there's no electricity is the other weird thing. So there's like the photosensitivity and you have to close the curtains. But she also mentioned something about because it's the time of war, she says, you know, the electricity got cut off like a week ago or months ago. And we just decided, what's the point? Yeah, the Germans just kept cutting it off. So So let's just let's just only use candles. And then that again sets up just this like spooky, spooky scene. Perfect right. setup for a for a scary movie where it's like, okay, now what if you lived in darkness? Mm-hmm. You know, you're already set, you know, yeah, living in this darkness, you know, what else could come from it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And we get these lines that happen um while the children and you know the mom are talking and we don't know what they're referring to. 
Oh, but yes. But they keep saying, so I wrote down some of the lines that that come up. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it happened or before, like this was how it was before or when mommy went mad. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, something happened mm-hmm. and that they all kind of know, but that, mm-hmm. that they also aren't really acknowledging it. Yeah. Yeah. They just don't talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. And then we also know that they used to have help, you know, some other help, but they all left. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You they know, just yeah. one day up and left. Yeah. So you know that an event occurred. Yeah. Basically the whole movie, but they, they reference it a lot, but also don't completely focus on it. Right. You they know? Don't. No. They, yeah. You, they kind of every once in a while just mention it and then you kind of move on. Yeah. Like they're trying not to think about it too much. Yeah. I mean, the little boy, especially, I mean, he's full on denial. Like Mm -hmm. I'm assuming just, you know, mom says we don't talk about that kind of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So good. So yeah, the, the servants are hired and they come on and, you know, all that's happening. And you kind of just see this like typical family. Right. So you see the mom, she's kind of strict. She's kind of got a stick up oh, her yeah. a bit. <laughs> but she's just trying to raise these kids. Um, and she talks about, you know, they have strange ideas sometimes. She kind of dismisses what they think. Um, she's very religious. Mm-hmm. So you see these scenes of her teaching them about um, limbo and that there's a special place called children's limbo. <laughs> And then she says, children who tell lies go to this limbo where like forever and eternity you're just tortured. And that's like every kid tells a lie. Which of which of the three of us has not told a lie at oh, some point? In I have childhood? never. You would never lie. You're the biggest <laughs> liar. I'm the biggest liar of us all. <laughs> I'm such a liar. And like, if I you am. genuinely think you tell one little lie, like I didn't eat the chocolate cake when you did or something, and then you're going to go forever in limbo. It's yeah. Like horrifying. Yeah. I'm a horrible liar oh, when it comes so to bad. like literally anything. Like we, we were doing like a surprise party for my, this is the, Matt will never let me forget this. We were doing like a surprise party thing for my dad and we were getting stuff for the party, like to decorate. And my dad called me while we were there and he just, you know, like just casually was like, oh, like, so what are you up to? And like, I was just like, I couldn't think of a single thing that I could be doing. (laughs) And so finally I like muttered out like, oh, I'm at the store. And he was like, oh, okay. Yeah. Like what store? And I was like, the, uh, um, store, I just, I, the Good door like, store. Matt was just staring at me making a phone call. Like you couldn't think of anything else to say. That's amazing. That is amazing. That is amazing. Store. Oh no. <laughs> Meanwhile, me and Brianna, maybe our our childhood was just a little bit more like traumatic. Yeah, you know, you just gotta tell lies sometimes. It's all yeah. good. Just do it's it. all good. <laughs> oh that's funny that's amazing <laughs> um no but yeah the does it, what is it there's like four types of purgatory or something yeah. is what yeah. she's explaining it's like there's the one for the damned which is my favorite it's like that's where yep. the damned go <laughs> that's me i'm the damned we're for all, sure we're all going to the center of the earth where it's yeah. nice and hot where all yep. the damned can be together <laughs> and then there's the one for the children who tell lies and i forget the other ones <laughs> Honestly, I don't remember yeah. what they were, but those were the most memorable. So yeah, there's definitely some religious, religious stuff happening here, which is creepy to me. <laughs> and I think and pretty quickly we start to get notes of the the haunting, right? Oh, Quote unquote. Yes. Like she hears, I think Grace is the, the her characters, right? Char- Grace, Grace, yeah, is okay, yeah. her name. Is that? I think it was pretty name? early. That yeah. yeah. Never would have thought that. Yeah. I've seen this movie like 10 times. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's her name. <laughs> um, she hears someone crying when she told the kids to go study in separate rooms. Right. So she, she hears someone crying. It was the one at first. Yeah. And, and then, then it wasn't. It was the other one. It wasn't. But 
Anne, right? Is it Anne or Anne? Anne. 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 Mm-hmm. Anne says, no, it's the boy. Victor. It's um Victor. Victor. Yeah, it was Victor. Like, you know, she's just saying like, no, like it wasn't me. It was Victor. He was just here. Mm-hmm. And Grace is not having it. She's like, yeah. no, like that's, you know, stop lying. Like what, you know, mm-hmm. I know it was you. Why are you crying? Or she just doesn't believe her. Right. Basically. The mom is very harsh toward Anne. Yeah. Like there's some resentment going on there. Mm-hmm. Um, well, and Anne just, you know. I mean, she's a little like bit her. of a twat. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not like, that's not the word I was You thinking. can't call a child a but twat. She is. She is, though, guys. <laughs> Come on. I would she's say she's a twat. a twat. She's just kind of like strong headed, you know? Like, yeah, she was, she's like, just strong willed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and like, she's <laughs> willing to stand up to her mom, you know, when sure. she knows that she's right. <laughs> Yeah, okay. You're drunk. Get out of <laughs> yeah, here. I'm not. I'm not. She also calls her um brother a cowardy custard, which is my favorite. <laughs> cowardy custard. Cowardy, 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 custard. cowardy custard. Yeah. But. Well, see, I didn't catch that part, but that's because I don't understand children. So I missed half their Oh scenes. yeah, you probably yeah. didn't even like hear half. I didn't even catch movie. that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, how did you even watch this movie with like physically being unable to like? It was really hard. Hear? It was really hard. Yeah, you know, I have to pick that. up from cues, um, mm-hmm. you know, facial reactions. <laughs> um, I refuse to turn on subtitles. So <laughs> I know. I wonder if children have subtitles, if you can even see them on the screen. No, it just like blurs. Yeah. Like, mental block. <laughs> <laughs> This is fascinating. You're going to be my thesis if I ever actually become a doctor. (laughs) There are dozens of us, okay? (laughs) Oh, it's amazing. But yeah, so so mom doesn't believe Anne and she punishes Anne. And there's all these things of like, there's there's kind of some some strange things going on. Like with the mm-hmm. piano opening and closing, and the mom is blaming her children or mm-hmm. the new hired help. Oh, yes. And I just once like once you know what the secret is, I just imagine like how brilliant that movie is because everything that the main character humans do mm-hmm. seems reasonable. But then later looking back on it, it's like that's what a ghost would be doing, like flicking on the lights and closing and like unlocking the doors and yeah, opening and closing the piano keys. Like it's little, small little things that they did, mm-hmm. and it's it's amazing. Because I feel like we should we should just be out with it at this. Yeah, that's true. We already said there'd be spoilers. Yeah, because oh, yeah. Dead. yeah. <laughs> <They're> <laughs> I'm <dead>. not drunk. <laughs> How many how many of these drinks have you had? I've the, only had two, but they're very strong. <laughs> the family is dead. So the mom and the two children are ghosts. Yeah. So they are in fact the ghosts. And not and the, just them. No, and the, not just them. Yeah. The gardener, the maid, all the help. They're but all the hired children. help is as well. Mm-hmm. Which is probably why when the mom said, let me introduce you to the children, they were like, oh, God, the children are dead. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I I love that they flipped it, right? Because so many ghost story movies, shows, etc., right? They go the same way that the beginning right. of this movie goes. A family living at home, you start seeing, hearing things, seeing things, it escalates. Yep. right where the ghosts are fully interacting with you i mean there's yeah where she goes and checks on the piano they slam the door in her face like it's yeah. like it it it's like a poltergeist right yeah. the beginning of this movie but i love that they flipped it it was you yeah, know what if this is how you would experience it from the other end and you you're know? the ghost and you're, you're the ghost you're being haunted because you don't realize yet that you're dead because mm-hmm. you're not accepting the thing that it happened when mommy went mad yes like it it's the most brilliant movie because i think it's the first one to do it at least the first one that so. I know of. first one i've seen yeah it's amazing mm-hmm. agreed amazing yeah 
So we don't need to get into like the nitty gritty of the entire plot line or anything, right. but mm-hmm. the dad comes home. So we realize he uh, too has died mm-hmm. in the war and that's why he's so shocked when he gets there and he sees them. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Which he again, leaves. knowing what happens, it's like, oh, you know, that makes sense. Why she would randomly find her husband in the fog. Right. As she's out and, you know, trying to get help or whatever she, exactly. she's going out to do. Yeah, again, just it's great because even when you watch it for the second, third time, it it's yeah. still good. Yeah, you know, you know so what's good. gonna happen. Yeah. Agreed. Well, and then and then like she there's other there's other little things like there's some room that has been closed off that she goes to look for something in, but then there's all these sheets that are covering things in the room which mm-hmm. when you first watch it you you don't really think much of it's it like, why is that it's just yeah. creepy but then when you go to think about it it's because they all died so of course right. everything in the room is covered and then she's like going to pull things up and you hear these whispers yes but the whispers that you hear they're saying things like oh she's here she's mm-hmm. watching and you realize it's because she's the ghost in there Yes. Yep. Ripping off the sheets. Yes. And the actual humans in that room are like, oh my God, the ghost is here. Yes. Like, oh. it's so cool. It's so good. Yeah. The So the director who not only directed, but he also wrote the script and the movie, the, the oh, music wow. for this movie. So he really mm-hmm. did everything. Uh, his name is Alejandro Amenabar. Uh, one thing he really talked about for this movie is he wanted the scares to be simple, like something you would be scared of when you were a kid. So Really, it's like the simple things where it's like, what if it's really dark, right? Like you yeah, just, you yeah. don't know what's hiding in the darkness. What if there were whispers and you didn't know where they were coming from? And then another big part of it was just silence. Yeah. You know, just having no sound, nothing. Cause it, it really is. It's so unsettling. Cause I, I think when she goes in that room at first, it's like really quiet where you're just trying to figure out what's happening. And then you get all like, just like really subtle whispers Mm -hmm. and again just makes it nice and creepy the whole time oh that that's so true because i feel like one of the things that makes this movie great is just the the sound the silence and then the whispers and also just the lighting it's Mm -hmm. so simple but just to make it dark with just then these shadows in these different angles they do such an amazing job of like freaking you out with doing like nothing yeah Okay, well, exactly. we have to talk about what's, I think, my favorite part, like my favorite scene in this movie, and it is Anne yes. in her first communion dress. Oh, we have to talk about that. Oh, my gosh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So Anne is trying on her first communion dress because it's coming up, and Grace wants her to take it off, but she's like, no, like, just let me sit in it for a while. Let me like play around with it. And so she covers her face with the veil, and she's dancing around super innocent. Though at the beginning of the scene is so innocent and it's so yeah. like exactly what a little girl would want to do, just like dance around in her dress. And she like pretends that there's a like someone asking her to dance. It's so innocent. She sits down to play with her puppet lit by a candle on the floor. Creepy. <laughs> which, yeah, so creepy. We see Anne on the floor with her veil over her, yep. playing with her toy as Grace coming in. Grace opens the door and she sees that she's on the floor. So she's mad because she doesn't want her to get dust on the dress. She's Starts a very uptight her. mother. Oh, very. The very, whole, very the whole uptight movie. mother. I'd be an uptight mother. And as she gets mm. close, you see Anne's hand is like old, like wrinkly. Not like an old lady. Like an old woman's hand. It is not Anne's. And as she gets closer... She sees not Anne, but an old woman Anne. in the first communion. So she, Grace freaks out and immediately starts like attacking she her. Would. And there's the perfect line where she goes, where's my daughter? Yeah. And Anne goes, but I am your daughter. Yeah. Oh. oh my gosh. So good. It was so good. That is my favorite scene. I, love I remember that scene. that scene haunted me for years. Like the first time I saw this movie, I just kept thinking about that scene. But I am your daughter. And something about Anne was always creepy. Yeah, she's know, a creepy something, child. Yeah, like mm-hmm. like I, something is off-putting about mm-hmm. her a little bit. I love and that. Then, <laughs> 
I, I mean, she's amazing, but mm-hmm. also like a little creepy. And then she t- just turns into this woman with, which we should say, Anne has already talked about the ghosts that she sees. Yes. Mm-hmm. she says she sees victor she like does this drawing she sees mm-hmm. victor she sees somebody else and she sees the old woman the most yeah the and the, the old woman has like these creepy glassed over eyes mm-hmm. glazed over glass yeah mm-hmm. these creepy eyes and so that's then who you see oh oh my god it's so good it's, it's so-, so creepy <laughs> so, so creepy. creepy it's my favorite scene Oh, it's an amazing scene. It's like it's... one of those all-time like classic mm-hmm. horror movies. Yeah. yeah, no, it's just it's beautiful. It's classically spooky. Mm-hmm. I love it so much. Agreed. Well, and we should talk about um that I I think maybe prior to that scene, at one point. Grace has been looking through. She's like trying to find something. Mm-hmm. I forget what she's trying to find, but she ends up looking through things and she finds this chest and she sees this old uh, photo album. Mm-hmm. And the photo album is not a typical photo album. Mm-hmm. Everyone in it looks like they're sleeping. <laughs> Yep. And she has this heart to heart with uh Bertha Mills, oh Mrs. Mills, and like Mrs. Mills divulges, oh yeah, that's what people used to do. They took pictures of the dead, mm-hmm. hoping that that would like keep their spirit alive or whatever. Yeah. Um, so forget where I was going with this story, but I felt <laughs> like <laughs> but it's worth mentioning. <laughs> you should all know about it. God, you guys don't mix <laughs> don't mix wasabi and vinegar and gin. It's yes, we did a double feature. This is the we second did. episode. The We've second. already sipped. Oh my gosh, I almost just spit my drink everywhere. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, being what you caught. Uh, people actually did that. Yes, they take photos of the dead. Yes. Yeah. So, like, that's a real thing. Yes. Yeah. One keeping spirits alive, and another one. One of the reason people did it is, I mean, photos just you know weren't as easy to get. You can just take a photo like that. You know, that was a right. hard thing to do and to get photos. So, another thing is, you know, you might not have any photos of them, so you can so take, take one, one last when, one of them. Take one when they're dead. Well, yeah, but you know, they that might be your only one. And, you know, they would put them in chairs or, like, in their bed or something. It was supposed to be a positive yeah. way to remember them and their uh, image. I uh, I feel like I'm a pretty creepy person, and that is really messed up, and I love it. <laughs> I love it. I would like people to pose me in weird things when I'm dead. And okay, we'll do that. Noted. It's done. Noted. But just make, make sure I look happen. good, right? Of yeah, like oh, do it well, from yeah. the do it from the right angle. Like, of course, mm-hmm. do yeah. it from above. Don't go from below and give me like a double dead chin. Don't like, love give me yeah, like <laughs> do it right. Yeah, don't do yeah. me dirty. <laughs> but I, really I like that. It. Um, Grace calls it. She 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 says it's macabre. Yes, it is macabre. <laughs> Which yeah, I'm not classy enough to use that word. No, but. no, same. <laughs> I am. <laughs> oh, and then when she when she does discover the dead photos, she has this conversation with Mrs. Mills, and Mrs. Mills talks about how, and again, knowing what you know mm-hmm. at the end of the movie, um, Mrs. Mills says something about like the the world of the dead gets mixed up with the world of the living. I love that line, mm-hmm. and it causes problems, and so like. When you first watch it, you're thinking, oh, there's dead people trying to infiltrate the house. And then you realize, yeah. no, you're the dead people getting mixed up with the living people that have moved into the house because you've been dead. And that's what Mrs. Mills means. That's yep. what Mrs. Because Mrs. Mills knows. She like, knows. She knows what's up. And the homicidal mother does not realize yet. Like, I actually think she's there to kind of help Grace she is. transition. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. Oh, there. Like, and that's the thing. It it almost seems like through some of the movie, because you see Mrs. Mills and what's his name, Lydia or Mr. Mr. Tuttle. Mr. Tuttle. Mm-hmm. You see them like they're like hiding graves, and yes, they all they, they almost seem like they're up to no good, but when you realize then what's going on is like they are there to help the mom but they realize like you can't just shock her into it yeah because there it was really traumatic what went what she went through before she died so we've got to like ease her into it Mm -hmm. so it's actually it's very sweet but almost they've like set it up to almost seem like they're doing something bad right oh definitely definitely I mean, I, I, you know, I get not wanting to shock her, but you know, they could have, they could have done a slightly better job Mm -hmm. of, um, letting her know what was going on. (laughs) Yeah. I agree with that. But also like, come on, they're dead too. They don't want to be cooking you food and cleaning. I, you know, I kind of get why they were like, you know what? I'm done. Like you fired me. (laughs) Right. To become Mm -hmm. a servant in your dead life. Like that fucking sucks. Right. Like. You were already that when you were alive and now you have to do that for all of eternity. That's not no, fair. thank you. Yeah, no thanks. <laughs> okay, um, should we just get into like the end? Yes. I guess the full yeah. kind of ending, yes. we, right? When we find everything out. Yes, we should. So because we learn, first we learn that the three people who showed up, that they are dead. They Because the we people. see the graves. We see their graves. The kids realize that they're ghosts as they're yes. running back into the house. Grace has got her shotgun ready to go to defend them. Is that? Shh. No, that's, yeah, that's right. That's after she's fired them and everything already. Yes. Yeah. And so she just wants me to give her the keys. They want her to leave. And then I'm trying to remember how, how they realize what's happening. Um, so the kids run upstairs to hide. Well, because the mom found the picture. She yes. found the photo of them dead. Yes. So she now knows they're dead too, or that there's something mm-hmm. going on. Yes. So they're walking towards the mom. The mom has the shotgun and she shoots them and mm-hmm. nothing happens. That's right. And they just keep walking forward. Yes. And she yeah. shoots them again and nothing happens. And that's mm-hmm. when she like turns and runs into the house. Yeah. And they're, they basically okay. approach yes. the house and are like, you need to figure out what's going on mm-hmm, essentially yeah. mm-hmm. and the the kids have run away like they've run away from the house to go searching but then they find the graves yes. right. so, so yeah the so they all kind of realize it at the same time have, mm-hmm. have known and then the mom is confronted um mm-hmm. them and oh i guess we should we should just mention because we talked about that grace finds her husband but mm-hmm. then he leaves again. He leaves. Yeah. He leaves. So he comes. I think he gets closure and then he leaves. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and so then they kind of are realizing daddy's never going to come back. Oh, and the mom starts talking about, um, I love when she talked about the war and she talks about the goodies and the baddies. The goodies and yeah. the baddies. Like, yeah. What kind of wards are those? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, they're kids. children. Yeah, they're kids. <laughs> But yeah, so like then like the husband, the husband has fully left, like he's left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We kind of skipped. Yeah. Crossed over. Yeah. So the husband has left. The kids have seen the graves. The mom sees the the people coming in. Yeah. It all is culminating. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 It all culminates. So finally, mom, kids, they're all inside. The kids run upstairs in their closet when they start hearing things. They start hearing people talking. They, you know, they're they're trying to figure out, like, clearly someone is outside the closet door from Mm -hmm. them. And this is as Grace is downstairs and the three people are just standing outside the front door trying to talk to her. (laughs) And then I think they, they're mentioning, okay, you're, the the intruders are here. Mm -hmm. And then they also confess we died from tuberculosis 50 years ago. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Grace okay. is like, Whoa? Yes. Right. Yes. So, so. The, yeah, so the kids are in the closet and then that's when, yeah, they found out like, oh, the intruders are here. And then they say like, and now you have to talk to them. 
Yeah. You know, like saying like, you have to go deal with this now. Like you are such a bad ghost because Mm -hmm. now you have to go participate in their seance. Mm -hmm. Um, So she goes upstairs. She has her little, little rosary. Like that's going to help her. Uh, She's like, okay, that, that was the one thing in this movie. I hate that she slowly goes up the stairs because at this point her kids are screaming. Right. And she knows that the intruders, quote unquote, are in the same room. So that was the one part I was like, okay, I think a mom would like run. In yeah, there. you would think so. Not like slowly walk to see what's going on. You would think so. I would think a mom would. Mm-hmm. Would this mom? Well, yeah, she's the shotgun wielding defender no. of this house. No, because this mom has done some things that we will talk about in sh- short time. <laughs> That I actually think that this mom is not super concerned with her child's well-being. Okay, fine, fine. So I actually, like, I get what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Like, a typical mom is going to run up. But I mm-hmm. think this mom, maybe not so much because maybe that's not her priority is her child's livelihood. Okay, fine, fine. So she walks into the children's room and there's a seance happening. And we mm-hmm. can see it now. We see yep. the intruders. So it's the mom and the dad and the the old lady at the table. And there's Mm -hmm. another guy there. um, And they are performing a seance. Mm -hmm. Oh, and the children have already been participating because they were already, when they were hiding in the wardrobe, there was this like jump scare with like the Mm -hmm. woman opening and like finding them. So they're already kind of like awakened. And and Anne is telling the old lady what their mother did. Yes. 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 Yeah, because she or she asks her, like, what did she do? And we see Anne walk up to the old woman and whisper into her ear. Right. As Grace is just watching. And at this point, that's when they tell them, you know, well, how could that have happened? You're all dead, you know, or something like that. And eventually they they're like, You're dead. Like, I think that's how she is like, is that how she killed you? Is that you? how she killed you? Yes, yes. And I think that's when they're like, we're not dead. And, and the like, kids get dead. super confused and they're like, and they're we're, like not we're not dead. Not, we're not dead. We're not dead. We're not dead. And they're just well, screaming it. Mm-hmm. And the and the mom is screaming it. And she's now shaking the table yes. and yes. throwing the papers. And we see it from the intruder's perspective where we no longer see Grace and the children. Mm-hmm. We just see the objects flying in the air. Yep. Yes. And yep. you realize that they're that dead. They are the dead. ghosts. Mm-hmm. And you hear the kids say, like, um, I think it's I think it's the boy. And he says, if we're dead, where's limbo? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then I think that's just so profound because obviously they're in limbo. Yeah. Like they're not or dead, they? they're not alive. Yeah. They're in yeah. this like limbo world. Right. Mm-hmm. It, oh, it's so yeah. So then finally they kind of process what's going on. We see Grace and the kids just outside sitting. They're all like hugging each other, trying to yeah. like figure. And, and then at this point, Grace is like, I, yeah, I don't know where we are. Well, and <laughs> she kind of confesses happening. and confesses. She yeah, was she like, confesses. You were just crying, and I just covered your face in the pillow, and mm-hmm. I killed you, and I'm so sorry, and I love you so much. And then I killed myself. Mm-hmm. And then I killed myself. I put the shotgun mm-hmm. to my head. And- but then I heard you laughing, and yeah. I was able to get up, and I thought everything was fine. Yeah, like mm-hmm. I thought God had forgiven me. Yeah. Got, got a mm-hmm. second chance. And the intruders decide to leave. The mom of, yes. of the, that family is like, uh, absolutely not. We're, <laughs> yeah, out of here. we're done. Yeah, we're done. <laughs> we're being this haunted. Is, this is not yeah. good for Victor. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. So she, she's like, we're out. And that's when Mrs. Mills tells Grace. You know, there will be others. Mm-hmm. Some will notice, some we will not, and mm-hmm. we'll go on. This is that's just the way how. It's always been. Yeah. yeah, this is how this is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's it. Oh, oh, so good, ladies. I also realized we never talked about what we were sipping on because this is a double feature. Oh, that's right. Oh, we were just so captivated by this movie we yeah to. we never we got to. to it 
Also, we were just drinking on the drink from the last episode. Yeah, just kept it going. But we should probably talk about what we're sipping on. So, Yvette, you chose our drink tonight. So why don't you tell us what you're sipping on, and then I'll say what I'm sipping on. Yes. Okay. I was kind of craving a wine. Since I figured we did a cocktail right before this, you know, Mm -hmm. switch it up to something else. So I am a big lover of rosé. It's been nice and warm where I am. So I wanted something that, you know, an easy sip and drink. Um, now, you know, my, my one thing is it's always red wines that have spooky themes. Yeah. I need more white wines and rosés to be spooky. Yes. Mm-hmm. I need someone to make this drink. Um, but I did find it's the, the St. Chateau Michel Rosé from 2021. Mm-hmm. And the reason I picked it is honestly just because the house on the logo looks exactly like the house yes. in this movie. I Love swear it. it looks just like it. Love it. Yeah. So go and, you know, if you can find this one, great. If you can't, enjoy yourself a nice chilled rosé. Perfect. And if you would like the mocktail version, I am just sipping on a nice sparkling water. I went with a LaCroix tonight, the limoncello variety. Mm -hmm. So if you need a nice mocktail, that's what I'm sipping on. Yeah. The limoncello has like actual flavor. I I love sparkling water, but I feel like the limoncello... You actually get the flavor while drinking yes. it. It's actually a little sweet. Agreed. So that's a good one. That's a good choice. Have you tried the beach plum? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh, I like that, that one. That one to me, I feel that's like good. it smells like a, a Red Bull. Oh. Like, does it not smell like a Red Bull? A little bit. I'll have to, I'll have to like pay it, attention next time. I feel like yeah. it tastes super sweet. So also, if you're wanting some flavor, get the beach. Yes. Plum. Mm-hmm. Yes. Superb. Huh. Yes. Okay. I'm going to smell it next time I have I it. Oh, you should. No, it's seriously, <laughs> it's like it's super good. Super, super good. Oh, and then we should say at the very, very end of the movie, um, the the mom, Grace, mentions like this house is ours. No yes. One from us. Yes. Mm-hmm. And she tells them to say it, oh, right? Like yeah. say it, this house is ours. It's like a mantra. It's like so a good. Mantra. Honestly, okay, there are so many incredible lines in this movie. Oh, I feel so like good. there were there were two that I like wrote down because I was like, okay, this is great. Mm-hmm. Um, one was I think at the beginning when they're doing their study and they're talking about the Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. where <laughs> um because Anne says, Oh, I don't believe the Holy Spirit is a dove. Nicholas says, you know, I don't believe that either. <laughs> uh and Anne say, you know, doves are anything but holy. And then Nicholas just says, They poo on the window. Yeah. They no, I wrote that down. On our window. They poo on our windows. <laughs> I love him. So I love that. No, that is um, a great. I feel line. like another one that I I really liked is at the end when they flash to the seance where the 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 mom of you know the alive family is saying like no like we're done we're moving this woman killed her children um and she says like and that girl possessed this lady like she's like it's such a random line but like points to the old woman and it's like yeah like that girl possessed this lady oh that's (laughs) so rude right (laughs) Like that, rude. Know, that like took me out of it because I thought it was so much to be like, yeah, this lady got possessed. This lady over <laughs> yeah, here. Yeah, her. Oh God. How funny. So yeah, there there were some great. There's those were the two that I that I wrote down, but there were some iconic lines in here. Oh, there were no, so I cool. just love this movie. There yeah. is something about it that I have seen it multiple times and will probably see it more times. Like. Mm-hmm. I just love it. The way that the haunting is, Mm -hmm. is it just, it encaptures you and you're Mm -hmm. like part of it. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do you want some fun facts about the movie Mm -hmm. while we're, while we're at it? Okay. So, you know, not only did we love it, everyone loved it. This movie had a $17 million budget, which is not crazy for a big movie. Um, which when you think about it though, it's like, it's not like they had any crazy effects or, or anything. So a low budget kind of makes sense. There's like eight characters total. But right. one of them was Nicole Kidman, who was yes. a fucking goddess. Yes. <laughs> um, it ended up earning more than $200 million. Wow. Though Good it investment. is, it is up there with just one of the highest grossing horror films. Nice. Since, so the movie was technically filmed in Spain. Uh, I think it's technically Spain's highest grossing 
film randomly, oh. even though it's not in Spanish, but technically it was filmed there. So it counts. Wow. Um, speaking of Nicole Kidman, she was kind of reluctant about doing this movie. Yeah. Mainly because it's so dark. I mm-hmm. mean, she had to play a mother that kills, kills her, her children, children. Right. You know, like it is not an but easy she did role. It so well. <laughs> I mean, she did, yes, yeah, she did great, but she was super. And apparently at one point, she like during rehearsals, she asked them to look for another actress because she just could not do it emotionally. She felt like she wow. couldn't really get there. She was not feeling this movie. She was just coming off of um, Moulin Rouge as well. So like a huge success. Also so she just didn't movie. know if this would be worth in her yeah. career to go from that to this. It was worth but it. But luckily she stayed. She saw that it could be a good movie. And she thinks that ultimately the reluctance and the anxiety of, you know, this movie maybe helped her character. Because Grace is always on edge yes. about things. Like it, you know, if anything, yeah. her real life emotions kind of were the emotions that the character was feeling. So totally. it kind of helped the character. And also her character was very aloof. But mm-hmm. in in a relatable way, which I can see, like her being mm-hmm. reluctant to do it comes across as like she's just this like uppity aloof, but not in a poor acting way in just a like she's been hurt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Way, so she yeah. can't get there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I so mean, it'd be child. And like when you think about the movie, she's pretty much in every shot she like is. this movie is right. just nicole kidman it really there is. are very yeah. very few scenes where she's not in it and honestly i don't even know if there's a scene that she's not in not very other many. people have lines but it, this is really about her mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. I, I, it would be hard to be on for that character for so long you know yeah. shooting this movie yeah but i'm happy that she did it um I, I don't know if you saw in the credits but this movie was executive produced by tom cruise i did see that <gasps> oh i forgot they were together <laughs> yes yes and actually oh my god they divorced the week that the others came out <laughs> oh so, <laughs> wow good so, i mean yeah this was their last uh collaboration <laughs> no i know but that's got to be emotionally hard for her yeah. it does <laughs> Yeah, but Tom Cruise is a weird, he's a weird guy. Yeah, yeah. I like, I love, have you guys seen the photos of Nicole Kidman after they finalized their divorce? No. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yes, no, look them up. It's her like outside and she just like the weight of the world has just come off her shoulders. Yeah, they're like, pretty amazing. So well, happy. Kind of like Katie Holmes. <laughs> yeah like like he (laughs) he is like a sucker of souls of powerful amazing women Mm -hmm. and then as soon as they're rid of him they can like be free and amazing again yeah um so yeah no look at those photos it's it's actually kind of amazing okay um okay we talked about the director alejandro a little bit so he is actually i'm not sure if he's from spain but he grew up in spain for sure like moved there when he was little so his first language is Spanish. So he wrote the entire script in Spanish oh. before translating it to English. This was his first English movie. Okay. He had made movies before, but they were all in Spanish. He was still pretty young when he made this. This like I think he was like 28. Dang. When he directed, wrote, and did the music for this movie. So, wow. hmm. you know. Impressive. <laughs> uh, it's very impressive. Right? Um. Uh, Apparently, it took them a really long time to cast the children. Um. So for the boy's character, they they found him kind of quickly. But for oh, Anne's so character, he, he's adorable. They nailed it. Uh, for Anne's character, though, it took them six months to wow. find someone that could fill that role. Mainly because they needed someone who could stand up to Nicole Kidman. Yeah, they I mean, needed really a little is. twat. <laughs> Because, like, Anna's kind of defiant, right? Yeah, and people, yeah. And I feel like she's believable. Like, she is. Oh, she's I mean, great. Yeah, like, she is. An, like, it's when the scene where Grace tells her to, like, stop talking. You know, she's like, okay, like, we're done with this conversation. Like, you yeah. can't talk anymore. And she just starts breathing, like, yeah. really loudly and heavily. I was like, that is exactly what a kid would do. Like, I yes, love like, that and scene. Then, <laughs> and then Nicole Kidman's character is like, stop breathing. And yes. like, you realize that that's what happens when she kills them. Right. Yeah. But 
So oh, yeah, I mean, God, they needed so someone who, who could do that and that you would believe, you know, like not just, and, and I mean, also this was his first, the director's first time working with child actors. So they needed someone that they believed was capable enough for it. So it took them a while, but I, I actually think they nailed it. They did an amazing oh, job. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Also, I, I looked yeah. up this girl and she's mm-hmm. really hot. Like she like grew up to be like this bombshell. Like she's, <laughs> yeah. Like, they saw something. They saw they something. I don't know if she's yeah. done any acting, but like, I just, yeah. Doesn't, I swear both of the kids look so familiar and I looked both of them up and neither of them had really been in anything else that I had seen but I swear they both look like someone I thought the same like, thing right like there's some maybe I've just seen this movie to me yeah out. but like probably there's That's something about them where when I saw the kids I was like I swear I've seen these kids somewhere else or they like as like adults themselves. I don't know yeah um okay so the movie was based off of an episode of a series called armchair theater I, I'd never heard of it but it's I remember a, that series oh. not well but I've never I never remember it. it yeah yeah so it's a British tv series that aired from 1956 to 1974 and also there was an episode it. season 10 episode 2 titled the others and it had a very similar plot so they kind of just took this and then developed it into a full scale movie yeah okay, okay. yeah uh okay the last fun fact I had for you guys is that the disease that the children have is real. It's a real Mm -hmm. thing that people experience. It's called xeroderma pigmentosum or XP for short. Okay. I think a lot of people just call it XP. Um, So it's super rare. I think like there's like thousands maybe of people in the world who have it. And in the U S it's in the hundreds. So it's, it's a handful Mm -hmm. of people. Um, but in the DVD commentary, because I love renting the DVDs, they had an interview with a family that was living with this disease. Hmm. So it was a family and one of their children has it. And they were just kind of describing it because like, it really, it's really similar to in the movie where you have to close all of the curtains and you, like they lock every door because it's so easy for people to open a door and forget, you know, to like close it yeah. at the end. Um but it was really cool. This family started a camp called Camp Sundown. So it's like a huge summer camp that they do. And the kids, so they found other people with XP. And the kids sleep during the day. And then at night, they do all of like the summer camp activities. Oh, so they stay up cool. all night doing like horseback riding and like face painting. And like they do like, I they think they even do like a Halloween thing where they were like dressed up and like face painting and stuff. So I thought oh that was kind of cool. That's yeah, there's like a whole cool. like community that they created. Yeah. From it. But yeah, it's a real thing. Wow. Which is that is so weird. Right? That'd be mm-hmm. miserable. Yeah. 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 No, like it was because they, they interviewed them for a while and it was, you know, when their their daughter first showed symptoms. I I mean, she was like weeks old. Yeah. And they were outside. And she was they were outside. She was under a tree, like in the shade. And all of a sudden, she just started screaming. So it's like this, like, maybe six-week-old baby starts screaming, and they look Aww. over, and she just had dots everywhere. So they thought, like, an anthill or something may have been next to them, or, like, bees. Yeah. Like, a beehive maybe fell or something. Um. Eventually, they realized what it was, and she was diagnosed. But it Ugh. was something insane. Like, she had had, like, six third degree burns wow before oh, she was like five baby. years old so it is yeah it is a it is a rough rough disease yeah it oh. sounds like it yeah I can't even I, imagine no because then I I feel like that would just lead to such vitamin d deficiency kind of like we saw or you'd we have to take in barbarian yeah 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 mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah definitely need some vitamins and stuff it's yeah it's a it's a hard it's a hard one to live, and it's mostly seen in, seen in children mainly because there's no cure really. So yeah, it's, it's yeah, the the lifespan is kind of short for yeah. people who have to live with it. Yeah, oh, wow, crazy. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Um. But yeah, those were all the the facts that I had for you guys from the DVD commentary. Love <laughs> that. Like, yeah. that I'm sure good. there's more, but I love just using the DVD. No, I think that's perfect. I think that's perfect. 
Well, speaking of crazy, should we get into our psychoanalysis? Let's do it. I have a short one for you today. Nice. Fantastic. Yeah. So disclaimer. Yes. Don't forget, folks, she is not a real doctor, but it's okay because these are not real people, especially the ghosts. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So speaking of ghosts, I'm going to um, fake diagnose my first ghost. Oh, Lydia. Oh, nice. (laughs) Let's talk about Lydia. So Lydia, um, they talked about that she has mutism. Mm Mm-hmm. And they said that that happened after she found out that she was dead. So mutism specifically, it's typically going to be called selective mutism. That is a passion project of mine. Um, It's one of the hardest conditions to work with um, because it's one of the most, um, I, I say stubborn, not in a bad way, but like treatment resistant types of behaviors. Mm hmm. Um, so mutism is, or selective mutism is basically this unwilling or refusal to speak. It typically happens after trauma or it can be a result of, um, depression. It is an anxiety disorder. So it's like a subset. Mm -hmm. So like everyone who has selective mutism will have anxiety, but not Mm -hmm. everyone that has anxiety will have selective mutism. If that mm-hmm. makes sense. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I just hit my mouth. All rectangles or squares, but not every square. Rhombuses. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do love me a rhombus. <laughs> so with mutism, um, your amygdala your amygdala receives these danger signals. Um, and it's typically in response to a trauma or some event, but then biologically and neuro biologically like the wires get crossed where like it's actually a lot of thing that it's something that everyone experiences that has anxiety or depression you're wired to think okay this event happened and i'm going to feel anxious or i'm going to feel sad but then your wires get crossed and you keep feeling anxious and sad mm-hmm. and it's mm-hmm. like okay like people who feel anxiety it's like okay no longer is the tiger chasing me and i have to like respond with fight flight it's just a a paper that's due or an email i have to write but Mm -hmm. your body still treats it like this tiger is chasing you so like your Mm -hmm. body wires all of your resources and energy to keeping you alive when it's like okay but it's just a paper yeah (laughs) but your body just gets it all (laughs) wires all crossed yes So it's very, very similar to that. Mm -hmm. Um, But so with mutism, there's this trauma or um, just like, yeah, this trauma or this, this event that leads to this communication shutdown. Um, And the treatment is really, really difficult. It really matters the um, match of the client and the therapist. So, Mm -hmm. Typically, I've worked with a lot of, of, of kids and people who like, if there's a person that is selective mute, there's nothing that can be done because they're like really, really hard to work with. But if you get that connection, it makes all the difference, yeah. um, which I've been able to do, which I, I haven't done with a lot of other things. Like I haven't like had a lot of success with eating disorders or like other types of like problems but with selective mutism it's like my little baby like oh very cool um so behavior therapy um because really you have to learn to um or you have to unlearn that your mutism is um like you're dependent on that Mm -hmm. and so like really like why would you ever talk you don't need to you've learned everyone is going to get your needs met the way you need Mm -hmm. them to without Mm -hmm. talking which I am a quiet person. I I know I'm on a podcast. <laughs> so like that doesn't seem like I am. But when I was when I was in like sixth and seventh grade, people used to call me the mute that commutes. What? Because <laughs> I didn't talk. I did not talk ever. Because like like I talked and then people said mean things to me. So I was just like, don't talk. Because then they can't say mean things to you. Oh. 
So like, I, like, I, I get it. I identify with like that, just like Mm -hmm. what's uh, there's a, there's a quote. It's like better to stay silent and have people assume you're an idiot than to speak up and remove all doubt. (laughs) Like, right. (laughs) I've never heard this say. No, you haven't heard that. Anyway, so I get it. I get like that fear of like being judged by things you say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, So behavior therapy is huge. Um, Medication can also sometimes be used. Um, A lot of times people who have um, mutism also have um, autism autism spectrum disorder, um, OCD, developmental delay, sensory Mm -hmm. processing disorder, um, but always also anxiety, which is Um, but really like, that's kind of the, the thing that happens with Lydia is like, oh, wait, I'm living my life Mm -hmm. or whatever they are. And then something weird happens. I'm still living my life. And then I'm talking and I'm doing stuff. And all of a sudden, wait, you're dead. Yeah. Like, you know what? Screw this. I'm just not going to talk anymore. Like every time I talk, things bad happen. I'm just going to stop. Yeah. You already have to deal with the tuberculosis, you know? Exactly. (laughs) Right. Yeah. So this is what happens with Lydia. Um, so typically like medication or behavior therapy is going to be what you're going to, you're going to do. And it's going to lead to bad outcomes in your adulthood. If you can't learn to be able to talk, because that's how society works. But with Lydia, you know what? I say, just let her do her. I mean, you know, she's a ghost, so. She's a ghost. She has nothing else to do. She doesn't need to provide for herself anymore. Mm -hmm. If she has people around her who can, like, get her without talking, and she doesn't want to talk, just let it lie. Fair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very fair. Mm -hmm. So now let's talk about moms who kill. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So, um. What's her name? Grace. Grace. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Grace has committed early filicide. Filicide, which is different from infanticide. So infanticide mm-hmm. is when you kill babies, mm-hmm. but filicide is killing of children, oh. like that are not babies. Like mm-hmm. so, um, infanticide is like when they're like young or like yeah. maybe even like a baby, born. Mm-hmm. babies. Yeah. Um, but really, filicide has been happening since like biblical times. Mm-hmm. And especially like back in the day, this happened when um, babies were born and children were living with diseases oh. mm-hmm. or disabilities of some sort because mm-hmm. there was no sort of structure to help them. And now, like th- that's not the case. There, I. It's not great. We live. Yeah. <laughs> like if we lived in another country, we'd see it's it would great. Be better. Yeah. <laughs> but um, but now there are, and like you know, you realize that, mm-hmm. you know, people that have disabilities or delays of some sort are people, mm-hmm. and um, are wonderful people. But back back like biblical times like they didn't know what to do and so i it was almost kind of like this like i don't know what to do they're gonna suffer so i'm gonna kill my baby because i don't know or like my child because i don't know like how to help them yeah yeah Mm -hmm. so it's 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 happened for a very very long time um typically mothers kill more babies Mm -hmm. fathers kill more children um who are eight eight years or more okay so like mm-hmm. if they're if they're younger than eight it's going to be the mom typically that kills them if they mm-hmm. are older than eight it's going to be the dad interesting i feel like that you know i've never you know heard someone say that mm-hmm. but that makes sense yeah, yeah like i believe it, it. Mm-hmm. well and and it's interesting because like there's been a little bit more light shed on postpartum, but postpartum is not just this, like I have a baby and for like a couple of weeks, I'm sad about it. No, that's yeah. not what postpartum is. Right. It's a severe, all-encompassing, consuming mental illness. 
For sure. Mm -hmm. Um, So one third of the people that do commit um, a phallicide or filicide um, do have a mental illness. Usually it's postpartum, Mm -hmm. depression, Mm -hmm. postpartum psychosis, or schizophrenia. Now, mm -hmm. most people with those illnesses are not Mm -hmm. going to kill their children. I will say that. Yes. But those that do kill their children tend to have this. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, and there's, there's really a few different reasons why a mother would kill her child. One is it's altruistic. Their child is suffering. They're never going to have a good life. And so the mom is like, why would I raise them just to have them suffer? Mm -hmm. I'm going to put them out of their misery. It's kind of like the patricide we talked about a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. I was trying to think, I was like, I feel like we've talked about something like this recently. (laughs) It was was with, um, wait, what was the one where the the person killed their parents yeah which one was that it's like we just talked about this but we did i can't remember it wasn't it wasn't psycho we've been sipping too much (laughs) we have been sipping too much okay but so just like children killing their parents parents killing killing their children it's either going to be all altruistic Um, It's going to be fatal maltreatment. Like basically you just, you don't care for them well enough, Mm -hmm. Um, which could be because you want, you don't want to, or because you don't have the ability. Yeah. Um, It's that it's an unwanted child. And that is actually a huge thing historically that has happened, Mm -hmm. especially like, I'm not going to try to be super political right now, Mm -hmm. but also I will be because the restriction of abortion is really a huge thing. Yeah. Like, so if people don't, they, they don't want this baby, they're not going to have this baby, but, but, but abortion is illegal. Then the baby mm-hmm. is born and then they have no choice, but to murder it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because oh, we can get political. Yeah. It's like, like maybe it, it's should, just, yeah. it's <laughs> just messed up. Like mm-hmm. it's just messed up that like, women who don't want a baby partners who don't want a baby they're forced to have one and then what are they supposed to do they have to like find some way to take care of it or just kill it so they don't have to and it's just it's a really it's a no win situation that they're forced into yeah Mm -hmm. it is yeah Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. um it also happens when a parent is acutely psychotic Mm -hmm. or or heartbreakingly for spousal revenge. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, that is the other reason why babies are killed. Um, and that is actually, I feel like some of those like um not flashy, but like the kind of famous cases that you know, oh, like, you yeah. know about mm-hmm. is like, oh, okay, like a parent. Like the big headlines. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The big headlines. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So surprisingly enough. We all know Marvin Gaye, yes? Mm-hmm. Let's get it on. Sexy. Yeah. Let's get it on. <laughs> did you know he was a victim of filicide? No. Marvin Gaye's father, Marvin Gaye Sr., killed him. I had no idea. I had no idea. I had no idea. Yeah, what? Like, yeah, he's probably the most famous person that I could think of or could research that was an example yeah, I had no idea. Side. Yeah, Marvin yeah. Gay, Mar- Marvin Gaye's father, Marvin Gaye Senior, killed him. Oh, huh. wow. Yeah, damn. It's depressing. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's yeah. terrible. Yeah. <laughs> so on that note, I'm done. <laughs> well, well, wow, thanks. Well done. <laughs> so that I'll just leave you with that. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. That was so, fascinating. So there's lots of different reasons why moms would kill their babies. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not common. Mm -hmm. It is heartbreaking, but typically there is something going on, which if we could provide some more mental health support Mm -hmm. to people in our country, Mm -hmm. we could reduce this a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I'm very political tonight. (laughs) That was a good PSA. I have zero apologies for it. Yeah. Hot take. We should help people. We should help people. Wild. Yeah. Hot take. Oh, I thought that was fascinating. That was good. Interesting. Good dive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love it. I always learn something in your psych segments. I know. Me too. Me too. (laughs) 
Um, well, are we interested with some things that happened in 2001? Always. Absolutely. The yes. year post-apocalypse because everyone thought the world was going to end. Oh my gosh. End. Yes. Yes. Well, we all, despite what everyone thought, we made it to 2001. Um, honestly, 2001 was kind of a rough year. It was like, you know, we all thought we were going to die. So yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to focus on the fun things and the positive things, you know? Um, so let's talk about, let's talk about some technology. Uh, in 2001, the ever useful Wikipedia went online. I used it so much today. Love oh my Wikipedia. gosh. I love Wikipedia. I love Wikipedia. our episode unofficially. <laughs> I would love that. <laughs> Thanks, Wikipedia. <laughs> yes, all information is provided to you by DVD commentaries and Wikipedia. That's it. <laughs> and and 20-year-old um, psychology textbooks. Yes. That's but that's crazy that it came out 22 years ago. And it is still, I mean, it's the stand. Everyone checks Wikipedia, right? Mm-hmm. For anything. You like you start there to get to get some stuff to get I info. bet young people don't even know that Wikipedia is like a play on words for encyclopedia. I bet they don't even get that. Which makes me sad. <laughs> Encyclopedias still exist. Do they? They'll still use though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, all right. More technology. Uh, Apple releases the iPod. (gasps) And along with it, iTunes. Oh, my God. (laughs) I I never had an actual iPod because, (gasps) like, it was too fancy. Mm. I did get the iPod Nano. I finally got an iPod when they had the Nanos. Mm -hmm. And it was, like, a very exciting moment for me. No, they were... It was great. And oh my God, I was, when I was in school, like the thing, like the default gift was iTunes gift cards. Because back in the day, if you wanted music, you Mm -hmm. had to pay for it. And you had to pay for every song. Every song. Every song. Kids these days don't understand. Yeah. Like, I don't know how Spotify does it, guys. Back in the day, we paid $1.99 per song. Mm -hmm. We did. (laughs) Wild times. Yeah. Yeah. The amount of, uh, you know, money that was invested in my iTunes account makes me really sad. (laughs) Do you have any idea how much money went into that? (laughs) Um, okay. Anyway, moving on. Uh, Microsoft <laughs> releases Windows XP. Okay. All right. Wow. <laughs> yes. Um, the remains of what many consider to be the oldest ancient human were found in Ethiopia, estimated oh, to be 5.5 million years old. I, I remember, remember that. that. Yeah. I feel like that was oh, huge news. That was big like, news. That was, that was big. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Uh, the Mars Odyssey was launched and reached Mars in, in October 2021. Mm-hmm. Try to see what's going on in Mars. Um, okay, let's see. Scrolling up. I forgot to write these down, so I have to pull. I know. <laughs> I, I didn't write a lot down. We we did a very t- quick turnaround. Yes, yes. This is a quick one. So. I'll just cut that. Okay. Popular yeah. films in 2021. Where it was a big year. So we talked about Moulin Rouge. Nicole Kidman was just coming off of that for the others. Uh, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone came out nice. in 2021. The Lord of the Rings, Fellowship of the Ring came out in 2001. Monsters, Inc. Oh, and Shrek both came out in 2001. <laughs> um, and so did Ocean's Eleven. Oh, it was a big so year. Fun. 2020 was a big, big year, year for, for movies. movies. So, yeah. I know this is a horror movie podcast, so we should mostly stick to horror movies. But I also am a super big fan of like good classic musicals. What do you ladies think about the musical Moulin Rouge? Do you like I it? I love yeah. that movie. Yeah. I watch it all the time. Do you really? <laughs> yes. Is oh, it a God, comfort it's... one? It is. Comfort it's movie comfort for you. One. I love it's, it. Like, it's a weird ass movie. Like, the, mm-hmm. like, it reminds me kind of like the um, Romeo and Juliet with Claire Danes and um, Leo DiCaprio, mm-hmm. where it's like super weird, like quick, like shots and stuff. Yeah, it yeah. doesn't make a lot of sense, but also it's like comforting and I love it so much. 
I'm going to go that. watch that as soon as we stop. Okay. Recording. Yes. If you need a, you know, non spooky cleanser, go watch yeah. Rouge. Go watch <laughs> Yeah. So good. <laughs> Um, let's see what else was going on in 2001 that was positive. Uh, the Leaning Tower of Giza reopened. It had been closed in 1990 for repairs and did not open until 2001 to the public. Okay. So it was closed for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, some popular musicians at the time were Janet Jackson, mm -hmm. Destiny's Child, Beyonce. <laughs> so good. You too. Alicia Keys. Oh, she, Alicia Keys is amazing. Yes. Jennifer Lopez. Oh. J-Lo. Uh, Radiohead. I'm just randomly picking some. And Creed. <laughs> oh, Creed. Oh, Creed. Old school. Love it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And that was, that was just some of the fun stuff. Oh my gosh. In good year. So, I mean, well, not so I mean, much, not, but yeah, but <laughs> there was some good moments. Mm -hmm. There mm -hmm. was some good moments for sure. Yeah. All right. So here on Spooky Sips, we don't give stars. We give sips for our review. So ladies, how many sips are you giving this movie? Like, I know we do this and I, it's every time I forget to think about my, my rating. <laughs> I have mine. So okay, I can go, go first. Okay. Go. Um, I'm going to give this one a four. Nice. Mm -hmm. I really, really like this movie. A four is a very high rating for me. It's mm -hmm. not perfect, but for me, I love the lighting. I love the acting. I am a super fan of Nicole Kidman and always will be. Mm -hmm. She is a golden goddess. Yeah. So I, I loved so much of this movie that is one I would absolutely recommend. And I'm giving it a four. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Four sips. Mm -hmm. Four sips. Yeah, I think I have to go with the same. That's what I was going to go with was four nice. sets. Mm -hmm. um, I love this movie. It's one that I recommend to others and that I watch mm -hmm. myself every now to and others? then. To others? <laughs> 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 oh, <-ching>. classic. <laughs> it's a fantastic movie. I love the music. I mm -hmm. love the cinematography, the acting, everything. I love mm -hmm. this movie. Yeah. It's very I good. think I'm, I, I'm like a little higher. I, I think for me, it's like a 4.25 because I okay. really like this movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think you can watch it a lot. I think it's the perfect, like get in a nice spooky mood. Yeah. And it has like those few, like really spooky moments that get you classic ghost story. I think it's, yes. it's a little higher. 4.25 for me. Love it. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I love that. Love oh, that. So good. well reviewed movie. Okay, oh, for sure. So for listeners, sure. if you haven't seen it, you better go see yeah. it. Even yeah. if you listened this far and heard the spoiler, it's still it's worth still watching. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Speaking of which, next time on Spooky Sips, we are going to watch Hush. If you haven't seen this movie yet, highly recommend it. Get watching and get sipping, and we'll see you next time on Spooky Sips. Bye. Hey, bye. Thank you for listening to Spooky Sips. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe wherever you're listening. To stay up to date on all the spooky things we're up to, follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Spooky Sips underscore podcast. And if you want to help support the podcast, consider buying us a coffee or really a cocktail. We are completely independent, so every little bit goes a long way to keeping our podcast running and improving. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you in two weeks.